welcome everybody to Salsa Signals webinar on how to profit during short-term crashes and retracements as we've recently experienced. My name is Elmarie and I will be your host for the session. Just to start us off on the right foot, um, a short disclaimer, the entire presentation is provided for informational purposes only. It is not an offer or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any financial instruments or participate in any particular trading idea or plan. All the zones on the signal charts are the analysts' own personal buy and sell zones. And in no way is BTAF or the analyst suggesting you follow these exit and entry points. If you need a full breakdown of the disclaimer, you can follow this link. Shaw will post the links in the chat for us, but this is just a short summary so that we are all in clear understanding what we require from each other. So let's quickly have a look at what our agenda for the next hour will be. And then I will introduce you to the rest of our team. First of all, I'm going to show you a one, two, three step route to find and join Salsa signals. And then Charles will walk you through a typical Salsa short signal. Jordan will take over from there to coach us on trading options on Bybit, after which 15 minutes will be allowed for questions and answers. So if you would like to ask a question after Jordan's presentation, please just raise your hand or type your question in the chat. And if possible, direct your question at a specific panel member, like for instance, Shaul or myself or Jordan. Marius will close the webinar off with a quick short-term forecast on Bitcoin, which I'm sure we are all looking forward to and will find extremely valuable at this stage. So let me introduce you to the team. As you already know, my name is Elmarie, and I'm one of two leading analysts for Salsa Signals. My partner is Charles, and then we have, are very privileged today to have Marius Landman on the call. He is the founder and CEO of Bitcoin Trend and Forecast and globally renowned for his accurate algorith algorithmic Bitcoin forecasts. Last but not least, we have Jordan from Bybit SA, who is joining us today as a special guest, because who better to coach us on Bybit than Mr. Bybit himself? Jordan is the brand ambassador and community manager for Bybit in South Africa, as well as TA and trading expert for the group. So quickly, where to find us and how to join Salsa Signals? The first step is go to bitcointav.com. Like I say, the link will be available in the chat. Your landing page will look like this. And now you can click on products, which will navigate you to Bitcoin TAF product page. You can scroll down until you see the Salsa Signals logo and then click on view. The third and last step is to select the subscription of your choice and click on buy and you will be a member of Salsa Signals. We also have a free Telegram channel, a public channel there in the left corner, which you can join if you just want to follow our chats and news broadcasts. Um, so after you have paid, you will receive an email, which is, will look similar to this one that you see on your screen now. And there will be a link in point one that you can click that will nav navigate you to the Bitcoin TAF registration bot. There you can click on the forward slash start or you can type forward slash start in the chat box and hit send. You will be prompted by the bot to complete the <laughs> After which you'll automatically be added to the Salsa Signals Telegram channel, which looks like this. Here yeah, we broadcast our signals and updates, which Shaw will break down for you in a minute. Just in a net nutshell, your subscription will include the following. You will receive two to four signals per day, except over weekends, because the market is slow and our signals are valid for a period of two to 48 hours. Further, you will receive access to the Salsa Signals Telegram channel, which is this what you see on your left-hand side. You will receive professional support in our Bitcoin TAF account via the ticket logging system. So if you have a complaint or a query or suggestion, then you can log it. We, we um, 
watch those tickets daily and reply to them as quickly as we can. You will receive a monthly report. And then once a month, we have a call similar to this one. We, it's usually an open call. All our members are welcome and we invite everybody that would be interested in salsa signals to join us. So next, we'll, you will see an example of a typical salsa short signal. And Shaul, my partner, he is going to take you through the breakdown of the signal. Over to you, Shaul. Uh, thank you, Elmeri. Welcome to everybody from my side. Um, on the screen, you can see the um, a typical signal that we will normally send out on a, on a telegram group. Um, just to break it down for you quickly, uh, on the left-hand side, we've got this white block here. That is um, the uh, copyright um, and the disclaimer that we, that we have. Um, Almeria has gone through it quickly before, and it basically um, says that we, it can't be copied and distributed. Uh, entry and exit levels are our salsa analysts' own personal buy and sell zones. And in no way is beta for the analyst suggesting you follow these exits and entry points. The chart is for educational purposes and we recommend that you conduct and rely upon your independent research and strategies before you enter the, the trades. Um, then we also have uh, another block here, which is the signal rules. Um, also, once again, it's not financial advice and it just gives you a quick breakdown of what you see on the chart. Uh, we've got the Salsa logo, logo also on the chart, so you should normally see that as well. And then when we do a short signal on the top here, we will have a, a breakdown of the potential profit and loss that you will have on the trades. Um, so you will also see it as the 2x and 3x leverage uh, profit and possible losses so that you have a good idea and understanding of, um, of what you can expect, expect from the trade bef before you enter. Um, on the chart itself, you will see there's a couple of lines. Um, let's start with a yellow line. The yellow line is our entry zone. Um, we recommend that you wait for the, for the trade to actually reach that, that entry zone. Just remember, this is now a short signal, so everything will be um, going to the downside. Um, and normally we will recommend uh, just waiting for that, that um, entry to be broken. Sometimes we do get a week into the entry zone and then it reverses, so we will recommend just wait for the, for the entry to be Actually, be, actually been reached and the, the candle action is stable in that area. Um, that, and we also say you can enter in a, in a um, region of about 1.5% to either side, but we definitely do recommend that you wait for it to break that entry zone. Um, the second, third and fourth lines, you'll see the green lines there. That is your take profit zones. Uh, we normally have uh, one, two, three, and sometimes a fourth profit zone for those moments when you get in long weeks that goes to the bottom side <laughs> and it can actually trigger that fourth uh, take profit point as well. And then on the top side, you'll see there's a pink zone. That is normally our stop loss zone. Um, that is the, um, and right on top, you'll see a dotted line there. Um, that is our actual last resort. That is our stop loss. So when it actually reaches that pink zone, you know, uh, try to be cautious, um, reassess the trade and see what you think. Before, are you going to let it run out or you could, because it might just reverse there as well. So it's basically just the area that you can take a bit of caution um, and decide if you want to exit the trade a bit earlier or you're going to stick through the trade and hopefully it will reverse. Um, sometimes we will also update you, and once the, the candle action has actually gone to the downside and entered, or either take profit zones, we would recommend obviously to lower your stop loss um, closer to your entry zone or at your entry zone, so that is just something that you must take note of, and always um, be aware of your trade, you know, don't take unnecessary risks. Uh, if you can make your stop loss smaller, always do that because that obviously minimizes your risk at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, that is in a nutshell from my side. Thank you, Amory. So next we have Jordan and Jordan, I'm going to give over to you 
Thank you very much, Almarie, and thank you to everyone for having me here. All right, so here we have the 15 minute chart on a coin called SNX. I'm going to show you how to enter according to these lovely salsa signals that Charles and Almarie work so hard on. So here we see the SNX signal that I will be giving an example of. Please do take note. Um, we did all just here now that this is, of course, your entry range. Here is your stop loss kind of reassessment range. And then, of course, your TP1, your TP2, your TP3, your TP4. So according to how the market is playing out around this entry zone, there are different ways about going into the entry. And there are different ways about actually being active with your trade if things start to go maybe up towards your stop loss. Uh, or maybe down towards TP1, but back into debt. And I'll be going through um, these options with you and how best, you know, to pay least fees, to make the most profit. I mean, at the end of the day here, the most important thing is capital preservation, risk management. You know, they, I know Salsa Signals does have beautiful results. They do have very high win rates. But the idea is that if your risk management is always proper, always in play and very solid, you don't even have to have a very high win rate because you'll be making small losses and you'll be making much larger gains. I will also show you, um, there's a lot to get through, but we'll go into a trailing stop, which, which can actually allow you to lock in very small profits. You know, people have different risk appetites. We'll also look at margin allocation. Uh, very briefly, you know, this isn't a long call. The major focus of this call is to show you the technical aspects of entering and exiting the trades, as well as taking your profits and locking in as much profits as you can. You know, even if you see a trade like this going into profit, but it doesn't even reach take profit one and it starts coming back, you might want to just take 50% off the table so that if you go into debt again, you know, you've already got leverage, your break even is already much lower. There are also ways of changing your actual entry price, as well as changing your liquidation price, which we will go into. So I know there is obviously a very varied level of experience in this group. So I'm going to go from very basic into a little bit uh, more advanced. So here, as I say, is the 15 minute chart. The signal we are looking at is on the one hour chart. So if you are a little bit new, maybe enter on the same charts that the signals are given so that they look the same and you can see the levels very easily. All right, looking like we might have a nice entry into this trade. So also what we can see here currently, we are above our short entry zone of 3,247. We're at 3,277. So if you really do believe in this trade, um, we can see money flow dropping. You know, this is not a, a call about indicators, but it's not a bad idea to learn how to use indicators um, and learn TA on high timeframes. You know, like these moving averages, we can see just how beautiful they are in terms of giving us these pumps. And, you know, um, an expert trader can kind of see where the pullbacks are, where the bounces are. And yeah, just because you're using signals does not mean that you should sleep on your technical analysis. Um, taking signals blindly is never a good idea. Even when it comes down to the fundamental analysis of certain coins like this, you don't want to go jump into a short if a few hours ago they just released a new development and could pump or something like that. All right, so the first thing to look at when entering a trade is your margin mode. Please drop for me on the chat if everybody is following. Is my voice clear? Awesome. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. So margin mode, we have cross or isolated straight off the bat. I will say if you have been trading for under a year uh, with leverage or on spot, um, definitely a year to two years before you enter into this zone, because when you are on cross, you're also risking the equity which exists in that pair in your spot wallet. This also allows you drastically higher and lower and less risky liquidations. So it is the preferable option, but the mathematics does get significantly more complicated and wait until you're ready. Wait until you're almost bored 
with isolated before you hop onto cross because it's like the next level in a video game basically and it gets a lot more <laughs> confusing all right so of course we are going to be sticking to isolated as an example with these trades because it's actually nice to isolate a little bit of money and know that that is the only bit of money that we are now risking on the table all right so our leverage is the next option to set remember keep it low this is also based on experience um, i am a high leverage scalper on the 15 minute and the five minute time frame so i'm quite comfortable with high leverage uh, but we can see even on this coin the leverage is limited to 25x because 25x is 25 times the risk involved in a spot trade it is exceptionally higher risk involved as you move up we can see here that they even allow us to go 0 0.2 0 0.3 leverage just because of how much this actually affects your liquidation and your risk and of course your potential profits so on these trades on these signals um, it is recommended by salsa only to go up to 3x if you are willing to hit that kind of a risk appetite um, so let's go with that for now so we confirm our margin mode as well as our leverage we are now on an isolated 3x this is a relatively low risk leverage as long as you keep your margin small of course if you put a hundred thousand dollars on 3x then one percent is also a relatively big loss so uh, i teach a lot of technical analysis and trading and i always teach bit by bit small gains consistent gains small margin you know if you're investing in crypto as we all are say you you have you know multiple investments and one of them is crypto and the crypto is ten thousand dollars you know just take maybe five percent of that to just to trade and then even of that five percent of your total savings when you're entering trades you only use ten percent of your portfolio at a time you can even only use five percent you see here i've got a little um sub account set up for testing strategies and paper trades i've got 147 dollars in here so very easy buy but makes it easy you know if you know uh, each signal that you actually choose they give out lots of signals salsa gives out two to four signals a day but they do recommend that you only take two at a time you know just so you can learn to manage these trades well of course if you're experienced you can run I don't know, 20 40 trades at a time but that does take experience so for the meantime look at when a coin pops up that you actually understand the fundamentals of you, you know about the coin uh, you like the coin maybe you've done some ta on the coin yourself you've been following it you know pick the ones that that really grab you and then decide do i want to put 10 percent of my margin you know am i going to want to add to this trade maybe if it goes into debt or am i going to also want to enter other trades you know some of the main capital preservation advice is like always always have money off the table because we never know if the market is going to crash if buying opportunities are going to come and that is basic investment advice so 10 percent we can see immediately just gives us um, some nice amounts according to our total equity and the first thing to decide well now we're on the third thing to decide and of course uh, we're going to decide whether to use a market or a limit order most of us should know by this point that a limit order allows us to trigger to enter a trade at a specific price a market order will enter us into a trade at the market price and we always pay a higher fee for this so let's see if we can get an entry and go uh, through how we would go about entering the signal so as we heard from shawl he does recommend that we actually wait for those entry zones to be broken before entering the trade we can see here that this current entry zone um, that is suggested by the signal 3,247 was actually broken all the way down already to 3,20. So uh, looking good in terms of the trade. Um, also nice that we've had a little bit of a pump here because that's actually a little bit of a nicer entry and maybe another opportunity. It is never a bad idea to sit back and just wait. If the trade plays out now and you miss it, that's okay. There's two to four signals a day. Just remember risk management. Okay, so here, let's try and do it exactly as prescribed. 
we are looking for, if I'm correct, Charles, 3,247 as our entry price. So let me show you a little trick here. If you had to enter here 3,247, it would most likely not get filled. Um, of course, uh, remember to click post only. This will make sure that your order will only be entered into the order book as a maker order. It will not. I mean, this price right now is so close to our price that if I don't click this, it will go through immediately as a maker. It will enter me into the trade as a maker order because there are actually buys. You know, this is the spread. So post only always. And then because Bybit liquidity is so good, they actually allow you to jump around the order book. Uh, another reason why I love Bybit so much. Okay, so instead of actually entering the price, 3,247, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a lower price that I can easily get a limit order at. Um, so next to port 3,100. And I'm going to open a limit short at that price with 10% of my equity on a 3x that is giving me an order value. Three times my 14 is 44. I'm clicking post only so that it will only go through as a maker order giving liquidity, hence paying a much lesser fee. You should only be opening on limit orders unless you really want to hop on if the trade is really playing out. But that's you no know, more for smaller time frame, um, 15 minute, 30 minute time frames. These are, you know, the one hour to the four hour. All right. So here we want to limit, open our short. And very important, if you actually want to have very strong risk management, risk, risk management in, in play, you can actually program your short to open with an initial stop loss. So if we go back to the signal, we can see already that our stop loss, well, it takes a bit of experience to know this, but I can see that the stop loss is about 25% on, on this kind of leverage or maybe a bit more. But either way, 25% is not a bad initial stop loss um, to start with. And now we can go and actually confirm So as you can see, it has been canceled as it would have been put through as a take a trade. So all we do is we take our price lower. Let's go to 2.9 and try and do the same thing. You know, this is only happening because this trade is, is really in the, in the sort of action zone right now, in the buy zone. Okay, stop loss, order price. not letting us. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I think what they're saying is actually it would be better on a limit to enter above the price, on a long to enter below the price. Uh, if we really want to enter here, we can do a conditional. Let me quickly show you here actually what would be a very nice opportunity. So if we wanted to enter a limit above the price, we just come in a little bit higher, 3,40, 10%, include your stop loss, post only, open the short, and then we can see it's actually entered us in. Of course, that's not where we want to enter. According to the signal, that is where our stop loss is. And now we can actually drag this down. So there we can see is our resistance at 3,295. And what you can see is that we've actually slipped into the order book there very close to our entry by dragging um, this order around, which is a very nice um, option that Bybit gives us. What's also nice to see here is that Yes, we could very easily come up and enter our short here. Um, our stop loss would also be initial, um, which we could then move down or move around. But what's great here is look how we can chase the price. So we slipped into the order book. Now we're moving closer towards where our actual entry would be, 3,266. But remember, it's nice to enter 
on a little bit of an up spike. So it's actually a good thing it wasn't letting me um, enter underneath the price. Basically, what it's saying is there are orders. There are lots of orders. So we just bring our limit closer and closer to the price. It's almost inevitable given, you know, the volatility according to Bitcoin that this price is going to jump around. And obviously, because it is a short and because we've seen it break the price, it's not the worst thing to actually enter slightly above because our short, if it goes into profit, it'll be slightly more in profit. And our stop loss will just be a little bit less of a loss. All right, so I actually would like to enter into this trade so I can show you how to go about doing the rest um, of the entry. We must just be a little bit patient here. And of course, I would be using my other indicators. And what I usually do, even on entering these, is I'll hop onto a 15 minute time frame. And very easily what we can see here is that the main support is here on our 50 EMA on this 15 minute time frame, And that for me would actually be uh, my point of entry for this kind of a trade. So here I would actually chase this a little bit um, until finding a nice entry, but just for the sake of this demonstration, uh, this is not maybe what I would usually do in the situation. I would be a little bit more patient, you know, maybe enter a market order if it breaks down uh, through this EMA with nice volume. But let's just see here, let's enter into the trade so I can show you how to go about entering uh, the rest of your different aspects of the trade. So bring the limit order right close to the price. As soon as we get a little bit of upside volatility, we will enter into a limit trade. Let's just give it one second. There we go. Your entire order has been filled. So if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, don't worry about the other trade, but basically here we can see the position margin, $14, my liquidation price, my initial stop loss, and my realized PL already for the trade. Remember the fee, I have paid 0 0.04 cents. Zero, sorry, 0 0.0042 cents. So if we want to know about the fees, we can come to the top and look at the funding rate and the countdown. That is a little bit of a different discussion and understanding. And I will drop a link uh, with all of that information for everyone to know. So what we can see initially on the chart, which is beautiful, is that if we go up, there is our initial stop loss. So we, we placed it a little bit too far um, according to this leverage. But what's beautiful is we can just drag it down just above the next, you know, the swing high that we've had. If we look at the signal, our stop loss is the 3.4 area. Um, here we have our stop. At 3.43, we can bring it a little bit down just to be tight with Charles risk management. He does place the stops at very specific positions. And of course, if you don't want to drag it around, let me show you how to, if you also didn't enter uh, with a stop loss initially, um, this is how you would go about it to add a regular stop loss. Uh, it's really nice. You can just choose the 5%, the 10%, 25%. So we can see that Charles risk is around 10%. He chose the 3,40. And that will tell you at that price what you will lose. $1 if it hits it. And it, will, it also tells you your ROI will be minus 11%. So we can confirm uh, that we would like to trigger our stop loss there. And then of course, it is about managing your trade. Take profits are not as urgent as your stop loss. Of course, if Bitcoin pumps now, we want to have risk management in place in case SNX decides to go to the moon and we don't want to lose our full $14, even though our risk management is relatively good here because we are on isolated and we are only using 10% of our account. All right, so now we are in the trade. We are at a minus 0.27%, 0 0 0 uh, 0.06 cents. And a lot of the time you will need to let your trades play out a little bit 
in this area. And hopefully, actually, for the sake of this demonstration, it will go a little bit up. So I can show you how to actually either increase or decrease your risk management, uh, depending on how you feel about this trade, as well as how much you've already put in the trade. Um, so yeah, lots of different methods and Bybit is very versatile. One of the reasons I love it. Okay, so of course, um, I hope we all understand that if we don't wanna enter on a limit, if we wanna enter on a market, we just take the quantity. So if we wanna use 10% of the account currently available and same thing, uh, sell short, make sure you enter the stop loss and that's where you would open your short um, on a market. All right, so conditional orders, a little bit more complicated, but the beautiful thing about them is that you get a trigger price. So say we wanted to trigger an entry at the entry price here of 3,24. If our price had to come uh, to maybe 3,26, we would enter the, the trigger price here for 3,26. That would then trigger our limit order at our 3,247. So this is probably the best way to enter trades. You can, you can trigger your actual execution of your trade on, your, on the last traded price, the index price, or the mark price. So this is definitely the most versatile order type. Uh, it does take a little bit more understanding, but definitely something to not forget about and definitely to use when you need a trigger price okay so the next most important thing is definitely understanding how to correctly take profits there are very nice ways that these exchanges actually automate um, our limit orders for us so we don't need to manually be waiting for these levels to take certain amounts of profit and what we can see here is that shal has given us four take profits one, two, three, four. He has not prescribed to us, if I'm incorrect, please do correct me, he has not prescribed to us how much exactly we should be taking at each level. So this is up to us to decide, do we want to be very consistent in our profits and take full profits quickly? Do we want to take half profits on our first one and then maybe 25% there, 25% there, so that we may have a little bit running at the end? Or should we just take 25% at the first 50% at the next, 75% at the next. This is all up to you as a trader. And yeah, let me show you how to go about it. And I'll show you how I usually go about it. So here we can see the first take profit very easily is at 3,151. Let me just double check that. 3,151. You don't even have to put in the first take profit. You know, if, you're, if your risk appetite is fine. Now what we can see here, um, if we go to our stop loss, you know, our risk at the moment is $1, $1.6. So we might not even want to put in the first TP. Um, it, it really depends on what that $1 means to you. But 3,51 is our first TP. So let's put it in at the order price of three. Actually, here we go. We're going to close this trade by limit at the order price. Sorry, 3,151. This is why I always double check. 3,151. We're going to close and look how easy it makes for us. It makes it for us. So these are the amount of contracts that we are working with at the moment. And you can, you know, you don't have to work on these percentages. You can enter, you can close any amount of the 12.9 contracts you have. So at the first take profit of 3,151, you know, it's never a bad idea to take profits off the table and to take significant profits off the table early. So usually what I do, TP1, 50%, boom. You already bring your break even nice and low and you've got further equity to throw around in that trade. If the trade goes further, you've still got 50% of your margin to earn you capital. So here we can see that at this level, uh, it would close and our profit would be 76 cents. It also tells us our closing fees, which are very low, one cent, because it is a maker order. So already we can see here, because our margin is low, because our leverage is also low, maybe these profits are just not suitable. And we maybe want to just go for a lower level, or we maybe want to take 75% 
and say, oh, maybe, okay, $1 is, is something, $1.14. So let's enter that um, at a post only. I think in terms of this trade, that's probably what I do, but let me show you how to enter all four take profit zones, because this is how you can really, really maximize your profits. So as we know, we have 12 point, let's see, 12.9 contracts. Say we would like to divide our profit taking equally between our take profit limits. Of course, we can just divide the 12.9 by four, uh, around about three contracts that we're taking at each level, and we can just lay those out at the levels. Of course, you can also choose to take 10%, then 25%, then 50%. And um, you know, often even the last 35% at TP3, if you take 75%, and then you just don't even put in TP4, you leave TP4 out, um, and you might get a nice significant drop there. You've already taken 75% off the table. That last 35% might even give you a bigger gain than your initial take profit. So, I mean, there's so much flexibility here. But basically, what we're going to do is keep it very simple. So, we're going to take three contracts off the table at the first TP of 3,151. We see that this will be 35 cents. Make sure post only so that it doesn't go through as a maker order and confirm. There we will see our first limit order is successfully placed. According to you know, the actual candles and the TA, we might see, oh, you know, we're in the middle there. What if we get support here? We might want to just drag it up so that we grab, we grab that support there. You know, we, we must always be looking for those profits. Of course, Shah's levels are probably better than this 15-minute level because he's done it on the hourly and the four hourly chart. So let's keep it at his level, 3,151. And then we go enter our next take profit, which is 3,039. And this doesn't have to take long. We just close by limit 3,039. Three of our contracts, post only, confirm. And there is TP2. If we zoom out already from here to the hourly chart, we will see how nice these take profit zones line up with our hourly levels. All right, so let me quickly show you something interesting here. Or actually, let me finish off. I get ahead of myself, let me finish off. Let's quickly enter 2,944. So close by limit, 2,944. And remember to always check at the bottom, you know, what, what your profit will be at that level, what your fees will be. Right, and now we can see right here that three contracts will be taken off the table here, three contracts will be taken off the table here, and three contracts will be taken off the table here. If we go through the bottom of that order, over here, there will still be three contracts on the table. I have not put in the fourth take profit. So possible scenarios here that could play out. Our price could now agree with us, come back into profit. It could hit our first take profit, take three off the table, come back up. It could go down to hit our second take profit. Uh, beautiful, not always the case. What if we now come down and we hit our first take profit, and now we start heading towards our stop loss. There are a few things that we might decide to do. One, take the profit, take the loss, and hopefully break slightly above even. Or if we are feeling strong about this trend, remember everything follows Bitcoin. Look at the RSIs on Bitcoin. Look at the one hour RSI on Bitcoin. See if it's overbought. See if it's oversold. See if you want to add to your, um, to your leverage in this position, not your <laughs> leverage is a bad word, but basically the amount of your equity, so your stance. So let me quickly show you how that would be done. And what's really cool about this is that you can actually change your liquidation and your entry price. Um, and usually nice for a bit of a pump. So I was hoping for it to pump a little bit into a loss here, but we are slightly in a loss. Uh, so let me show you. Currently, you can see that we are in a minus 1% loss, which is, uh, around about 11 cents. 
Uh, very important to note here our liquidation price. So this is where we would lose our full $14. But remember, our stop loss is only allowing us to lose the $1. So nice risk management, pretty much no worries if we, get, if we go wrong here. But if we go right, we could earn a little bit um, to compound. You know, every time you're adding to this amount here and you're choosing 10%, the 10% is getting bigger if you're using a compounding strategy. Okay, so oof, we're going back in. We're only slightly above, but let me go through it. So basically, I will go into the chat now. I see questions coming in. Thank you so much. But this is awesome. So if I want to actually add to my trade here in a loss, um, right now we are, we're really good for liquidation uh, because we've got our stop loss in place. Our liquidation also isn't too close. It would take a big pump to pump through the 4.2 level. Um, so we're fine. You know? We don't need to worry about liquidation. But uh, now we're going into profit. But our entry price could have been maybe a little bit better. So what's awesome to note is that you can come here to where you would enter a trade and you can actually enter a market. So to come into market and say we were higher um, into, into a loss here, whatever you choose to add here while, in, while entering another trade, obviously make sure uh, you are on hedge mode. This is the mode that I use. So you're not opening many multiple trades on the same coin. You are working with one short and one long position. Very important. And this is a whole nother discussion, these different modes. All right. So be sure your settings are correct there. All right. So here, if we actually just add to this trade, uh, it doesn't have to be a full 10%. You know, you can, you can add smaller amounts uh, to the trade if you like. Even on a 3x, that's only adding a 13 uh, $13. And as soon as you actually add to it, what you'll see is, of course, your margin will change, but your entry price also sees a change. Of course, this was extremely slight, but um, obviously will happen differently in different situations. So let me look at the chat, please. Let me know if everybody is following. The next thing we're going to look at is a trailing stop. So now I've increased my margin in this trade. You know, it's very easy. Uh, Bybit makes it quite easy. Basically, the other way here to increase would just be to add. So say I want to add, I want to get to like over $20 on this trade because I'm very confident about it. You know, it's not always a good thing to add to trades. You know, the main thing that I'm going to say is risk management, capital preservation, small amounts on trades. But if you start with a small amount on a trade, then it's not so bad to, to mess around with, with adding and taking away. So you can increase your margin here very easily. And then it will also change your liquidation price. So quite significantly, as we can see, um, which is really, really good to note. And yeah, an awesome function that Bybit allows us. If you want to even take away from your margin. So now, say now we're going into debt and you're getting a bit worried and maybe you're overpositioned uh, towards this trade. It's very easy. You come to market and you close the amount of contracts that you would like to close. You take whatever debt you'd like to take and you leave whatever you're willing to lose on the table. All right. So before I do trailing stop, let me have a look at the chat. Is Bybit a more trader-friendly platform compared to the major platforms out there? And are they regulated? Well, yeah, I mean, Bybit support is actually just the best thing ever. If you're ever having a problem with anything, you come down to this little thing at the bottom here. And very, very quickly, you will be speaking to a real person. Of course, they'll give you a bot first to you know, kind of get an idea of what's going on. But you get to talk to someone that will help you according to what you need and they will help you very very quickly especially if you are contacting them you know about anything to do with the platform because we take this all very seriously every single one of yeah of these issues for bybit is extremely serious and yeah i've been impressed month after month after month through this affiliation in just the realness of this company they are real people 
who actually interact with you on a real basis. And they are all about empowering and rewarding and communities. And, you know, at first coming into a company, you can think this is just their marketing, but you know what, they are real people that you speak to. And that is awesome. Okay. So Jordan will confirm. Let's see. Is the fees on a conditional order the same as a limit order? Yes. Uh, yes, most likely. Um, yeah, should be the same because it is a maker order. Um, as long as obviously your trigger price is far enough away from your order price um, so that it doesn't go through as a market order. You know, as long as your, of course, here a conditional can also be to trigger a market order. So then you will pay your market fees. Um, but if your conditional triggers a limit, then it will be limit fees. Um, but remember, post only. Post only will make sure that it is a maker order. Okay, nice question. Thank you so much. You can trade leverage on any exchange of your choice allowed in your country, 100%. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be Bybit. But you know what? Go and do your own research. And I use a profit calculator quite a lot for my scalping strategies. And, and they actually, some of the profit calculators take into account all of the fees across all of the exchanges. And on the market, you know, I scalp on the five minute time frame, and I'm only using market orders. I'm only, only entering at market price and the fees are significantly lower than other exchanges. Okay, so is there a way to save your margin settings? My leverage seems to always change. Oh, so yeah, when you change, um, you know, that's specific there, which is, which is actually what you want. So here are all of your pairs and you can favorite your favorite pairs. So the coins that you, you know, trade actively, maybe say on a daily basis or whatever, you can quickly see what's pumping. Like we might want a short ape here, apes pump 16%. Now, you know, what's nothing's dipping, so not really looking to long anything, um, but it just allows you very quick access here. And then if you jump to another coin, your leverage will be set specifically to that coin um, from when you previously set it there. And I really like that because you tend to get used to, you know, a margin mode or a leverage on a certain pair. So I, I do like the way that is set up. Thank you for that question. How can we maximize our salsa strategy with two to four signals a day? It is a lot and they don't move at the same time. Not always possible to enter all the trades. Thank you, Yaku. Lovely question. So um, yeah, basically what Charles was saying to me is that they don't advise um, to enter all the trades. Just enter the trades that you're excited about. You know, when I saw the signal, I was like, brilliant, brilliant. You know, just do your own research. Take out your measurement tool you know, from the last impulse and see that we've pumped 22%. So there might just be a little bit of room here for us to make some profits and just look at this risk to reward ratio that Shal has set up. You know, this is what you're risking. This is what you're standing to gain. This already we can see is a one to three on the first, I mean, three take profits. Very nice. Okay, so here, trailing stop. A function of Bybit that I absolutely love. I will go into the rest of the question soon. I'd just love to get through all this content. Um, I know we are running through our time. All right. So one of the coolest functions, honestly. So here, trailing stop. Um, there is going to be an activation price added here very soon. There's going to be a development. So you will be able to actually activate your trailing stop at a certain price, like your conditional order. But for the moment, I usually enter a trailing stop either once I'm in profit or what I can do is I can put it at the same level as my normal stop. I usually like to wait until I'm close to my first TP before I put in my trailing stop. So what this can do is that if our price comes down into our entry nicely and doesn't hit our first TP and then would have come back up and stopped us out and we would have lost money. But no, if you have a trailing stop, at your entry, at your um, stop loss, it will trail down with the price so that when the price comes back up here, it will actually capture a little bit of profits for you. Even if it does have your first take profit, it will come back and capture a little bit of profits for you. Even if it takes your second take profit. And if you get these levels right, if you get these juicy levels for a trailing stop, what you'll see is it can be magic. This kind of a thing 
can occur where you go take your first one, you come up and you don't hit your trailing stop. You take your second one, you come up, you don't hit it. You take your third one and then you see a pump and you hit your trailing stop. And it's just like, thank you, maximized profits. All right, so let me show you how to do this. So our stop loss is at 3,4, which is, as we can see from 3,27, our entry, it's about a 12, 13 cents distance. This also doesn't matter as we can drag this around. The Bybit platform is so lovely. But um, yeah, so anyway, let's just put 0 0.20 as a retracement. This means that if the best traded price, so when you activate your trailing stop, it takes your current price that you are at as your best traded price. Any movement, from that price will move your trailing stop. So from now, if the price goes down, we'll see our trailing stop move before our eyes. As I said, we can bring it down to our stop loss. The only problem here, this is why I don't usually set it initially and the activation price will help. Only problem here is that if we hang around this area and don't hit the TP and come back up in here, we might get stopped out in a little bit of loss, you know, before going to hit our further TPs. So be wary of that. Now, what we can see here now is that we've got some very strong risk management in place. We have a normal stop loss, uh, which is a market order. So remember, we'll also pay a little market fee there when we take that loss. Our conditional last traded price trigger, which you see here, which I'm holding, which we can move around, which is our trailing stop, is a limit order. Another reason to use them. You are paying significantly less fees, like 10 times less fees on this kind of an order. Um, say we're not willing. Say we do have decent margin on this. Like say our 14 or our $18 is $180. And we, you know, we're not actually comfortable with this 3,4 stop because you know, we don't want to lose, um, oh, it would only be short sure, $10, but say we're not comfortable with that. We can take this trailing stop and we can actually, you know, bring it close to the price so that if this trade, basically this trade cannot go into big debt, it, it will only either get stopped out Or if it plays in your favor, it will trail the price very closely and hopefully capture you some small, you know, but consistent profits among lots of trades. So this trailing stop is really up to you how you decide to go about using it. Uh, let me look at the chat quickly to see if I missed any questions. Do I need to have confirmations before taking the trade? So confirmations are always good to look for. And that will come down to your own TA because Shal can't really give you those confirmations. Of course, he can give you an update uh, and they do give updates. But, you know, those confirmations, it's just a matter of going on to TradingView. Um, and I can show you how to do that. But this is mostly about the Bybit platform. But just go into TradingView and set an alert above that price. Um, whichever entry price you're looking at so that if the price starts coming down uh, towards that price you're aware of it and then of course what you're looking for is your rsi in the right place you're also looking at your volume you know i've got a macd histogram telling me here what the volume momentum flow is doing um, like i said i would never suggest to anyone to take signals blindly um, you can if you're using low margin and you know if it's a very passive thing for you but even then, I would say experience in the market is never a bad thing. Anytime you have to watch your trades play out, you'll see which ones play out well. Like you can see here, this is the one hour time frame. I've got my money flow indicator here. And, you know, it's been bouncing around at the top. So for me, the risk here is not super high. Of course, we can come back up. But at some point, our money flow is going to come down. It already tried here. Um, same thing with our momentum on our histogram coming down. Same thing with our regular RSI. The only worry here, which I would never usually enter a trade right now, um, is because of our stochastic. So here is something that's telling you maybe it's better 
to just wait. This looks like it's actually turning around for a smooth upwards reversal. Maybe it would be better to wait. Remember, this is an oscillator. So a movement like this on this oscillator might just be something like that. All right, so I hope everybody is following. Let's have another look at the chat. Great questions. Let me hop to the bottom. Yaku, that is the best question that you could possibly ask right now. So we, have, we are launching now, 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 Czar P2P on Bybit. So now you can buy and sell crypto directly peer-to-peer -peer on Bybit using RANs. And this is an absolute game changer. So thank you for that question. All right, let me quickly look at my notes. Margin adjustment we've covered. Closing partially via market. Trailing stop is now in play. So further questions, let me know. What are you wondering? Charles, is there anything uh, which I haven't covered, which is very important? Sometimes I just miss things out. Um, Jordan, there's one thing I have a question about is that mark price. I've seen before then when you have high volatility on a coin, that that mark price is totally different from your, your normal um, prices. Maybe you can just elaborate a little bit on that because I've actually had situations Beautiful where question. I've actually got stopped out and stuff because of that. Okay, so the market price allows you a little bit of insight into your spread. Um, obviously, your last traded price on the exchange differs from your mark price. And a spread is something that, you know, you wrap your head around with a little bit more experience. Uh, you come and look at the order book. You see where there are, where there is liquidity uh, that you can pick up if you are entering large trades. Uh, but the main thing to keep in mind, and Bybit does make it nice and easy for us, is that we can come here and we can actually, if we hover over our current trade, it can see, we can see it says here, by default, the unrealized profit and loss are calculated based on the last traded price. When you move your cursor here, the unrealized profit and loss shown are calculated based on the mark price. This is also why conditional orders can help you uh, because then you can go and trigger orders at specific um, limit order places, uh, which will really help you in terms of liquidity if you are dealing um, in high numbers. Uh, basically on these altcoins, we do get a little bit of a higher spread uh, with the volatility you know, between the market and the last traded price. And that is something to watch out for. And if it is stopping you out, then basically what you will need to do is just allow for that. Basically you are using leverage here. You're on a leveraged exchange. The volatility is slightly higher. You might want to bring your stop losses a little bit above your swing high, just so that you don't, you know, get stopped out. If that market price decides, oh, we want to spike here, if everyone decides to FOMO in and everyone's just buying all of a sudden and the order book spread goes crazy and everything goes to the top, um, that might be what you're referring to, Shaw, when you get stopped out there. Um, so just have a little bit of leeway, you know. If you're using a derivatives exchange, of course, we could be doing these trades on spot, but then it wouldn't allow us, you know, these beautiful stop loss and take profit zones. And if you would like to, of course, do these trades on spot, uh, which is recommended, I would say, of course, um, your capital needs to be slightly higher. And yeah, it's a little bit of a different trading profile, but basically you would just choose a one X on your margin. Um, but yeah, very nice question there according to the market price. So just always be aware. Like here we can see that there isn't much of a problem right now. Um, it's quickly easy to see, you know, if you hover over and you see a big difference in the percentage between the mark price, like if the mark price is boosting and your profit is high, maybe you just want to quickly close. Um, and instead of, you know, taking, it's the same thing. You know, if you see a spike in profit, you can profit off that. Um, set your limit orders, you know, nice and high. So if we see yeah, maybe there's a bit of a bigger spread on the mark price here in the pumps and dumps, maybe we want to just, you know, usually I would actually bring my limit prices closer to the price because I like to take profits off the table quickly. But these market prices can give us beautiful wicks. So we can just bring all of our limits slightly down, especially if we start seeing big volatility to the downside. We can decide we want to adjust what you can see is I am still using levels, but I'm adjusting 
just to the body instead of the wick or just to the slightly lower level so that if we get market wicks down there, we grab that liquidity and we take those profits. So beautiful question. Thank you, Charles.